Hey there, motorheads. Well, sled season's over. I rode my 78 TXL quite a bit this last winter, and uh, the last time out, I had a little difficulty. So, I'm going to do a little repair work on this sled, and I'll take you along for the ride. Um, the issue is, as you can see, if I get the camera in the right spot, there is some chunks missing from that piston skirt. So uh, this happened on the last ride of the year, and um, I don't know. I, I didn't build the motor. I bought it from a friend who had it overboard, and I don't know what pistons he used, and I don't know what skirt clearance he had in there, but I am going to guess, based on this, that they were the cheapest of cheap pistons and maybe too much skirt clearance. So we're going to rip her down. I've already got the exhaust out. Uh, nice thing about a TXL is right here is this drain plug so i'm going to pull the uh, y pipe off proceed to drain this into a bucket and uh, remove the clutching and uh, probably get that light right in your eyes remove the clutches and hoses and wires and get that motor out and we'll come back after that all right here we go with the draining um, a lot of people have owned these motors over the years, and they love them for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, they start easy. They make great power for a 340. Um, I like how easy they are to work on. Uh, it's just they always seal up nice and tight. And as you can see, you don't necessarily have to make a huge mess with your antifreeze with that handy drain plug. Uh, a lot of other motors, you got a mess. So, we'll pop this uh, radiator cap loose, and there we go. So, I'll continue on with the teardown now that she's empty. Alright, got the motor out and apart. Time to show you the carnage. You can see, there's some pretty good chunks all through the bottom end. So, I will be pulling this crank out. Um... Let's see. Let's see if I can get you a good comparison of the skirt. You can see how long the good skirt is. Uh, the bad skirt is really bad. Lots of chunkage there. Um, I'm not sure what pistons these are. They actually look like they might be SPIs, but I'm not sure. Could only get so lucky. Um, anyways, I'm going to continue on and uh, probably bring you back either when I tear down further or when I check the skirt clearance and see what that's about. All right. All right. Here's a tip I was taught by uh, racing great Dave DeLotter uh, that was not done on this motor. Um, these have the round wire uh, piston clips and nobody carved a notch. So I've rotated this so that the gap on the clip is over here in this area. I'm not sure if you can see this, and I'm going to come in with my Dremel tool and uh, carve a notch to the base of the groove, and then I'll be able to rotate the end past that, and I'll be able to get this pick behind the clip and actually get it out. And uh, without doing that, it'd be virtually impossible to hook the end of that clip and get it out. Plus, this is junk piston anyways, and although the other one looks good, I tend to replace them in pairs. All right, there's the groove I was talking about. So uh, I'm not going to be able to get that clip out with one hand. But like I mentioned, I'm just going to rotate it and uh, grab the end, pop it out. I'm sure you can see lots of little aluminum flakes and stuff, but like I already mentioned, I have to tear the whole bottom end apart and do a complete clean out on this motor anyways, just because of the debris from the broken piston. So uh, bring you back once I get the pistons off. All right, I set aside the bottom end for now. We're going to check the skirt clearance because I really want to know. Obviously, I only have one decent piston, so uh, we're going to check that out. Um, if you're going to check your clearances yourself, you need some tools. So I've got a pretty good micrometer set. I've got a dial bore gauge, and I know how to use them. Um, as you can see, this particular piston is, uh, well, I can't read it through the camera. It's 
one point uh, four two three, and then I will have to pull the mic off. It takes both hands to read the tenths. But uh, if you know how to read a mic, that's one point four two three thousandths and some tenths. So uh, we'll be using that setting. I'm going to actually lock it. And we'll be using that setting to uh, set up the dial bore gauge. Uh, before you get your undies in a bundle, about me clamping stuff in the vise, I'm not clamping it real hard. I'm just clamping it enough to, uh, you know, to keep it from moving around. And that'll be especially true on the mic. I don't want it to fall on the floor, but I am keeping a rag wrapped around it, and uh, it won't get damaged, bent, or stretched, or broken. So there, there we go for now. I'll come back in a bit with the dial bore gauge. All right, so got the dial bore gauge set up, and I've zeroed it out. I'm not going to give a whole class on how to use it, but you can see I used the 2.40 uh, um, anvil. I didn't use any of the spacers. My reading is, was um, not very much less than 2.4. I didn't need any spacers. Uh, this is easier to do with two hands, but I will try to do this with one and show you. It basically just ends up, um, gets zeroed. Really not fun with one hand. But you wiggle it around and you find that high point and you set the zero there. Um, anywhere I move it to, maybe I guess maybe I got a couple tenths, but but uh, for the purposes of this, to get a rough idea of the uh, of the piston skirt clearance, uh, this is just fine. I would probably be a little more careful if I was actually doing the machine work. So I'll grab the uh, I'll grab the uh, mono block, throw it up there, and we will check the clearances. Uh, because I only have one piston to work from, we're going to assume that they were the same size. I know that's a big assumption, and they should really be measured per the bore they're going into. But uh, this is just tear down and trying to find out what the issue was. So that's what we're doing right now. So, I'll show you what changed there. Yeah, that 20 thou shim. I had to put that onto the dial bore gauge and re-zero it because the clearance is so big that uh, it wouldn't even measure. So uh, we'll, we'll try to do this quick one-handed. And uh, you go just above the exhaust port and uh, I'm calling that about 12 and a half thou clearance. So I am telling you, and that's uh, about the same on both holes. I am not shocked in the least that that piston skirt shattered. That is an insane amount of clearance. So uh, I'm going to check my specs quick and see if these are standard bore. Uh, obviously. It's not a half a millimeter or 20 thousandths overbore, um, or at least it's not like they put a standard bore in a 20 thou overbore. I mean, it's less than that, but that's huge. Uh, I would never set my skirt clearance up for more than maybe six thousandths on this engine, and so that's fully double. So hopefully mystery solved. Uh, I have a 20 thou over piston I'll dig out, or um, not, a, not a 20. Well, yeah, a 20, a half a millimeter over, and we'll compare them quick and try to figure out just exactly what that piston there is. All right, folks, I think we're getting to the bottom of the mystery here. Uh, please forgive my dying battery on my caliper, and forgive my inches instead of metric, because this is a metric motor, um, but uh, I'm going to show you. This was a appears to be an SPI piston and it appears to be standard bore and uh, roughly 2.41 you know you can never be too accurate with the caliper 
and uh, well, this is 2.434 so uh, you can see the brand new piston is uh, 20 over or half a millimeter over so it looks like somebody put standard pistons in to a model block with a massive amount of, of cylinder wear and we'll check that right now uh, we, we can caliper it and see that amount and you can see 2.432 so you know once again this is just the guessing stick this is not an accurate measurement I would trust the results off the dial bore gauge much more than that but um, that is huge um, but it's still it's not it's it's almost almost to the first overbore but the first overbore half a millimeter twenty thousandths larger piston won't go in the hole so it's not it's not the case that somebody uh, actually bored it and then put the wrong size pistons in but it definitely is the case that uh, somebody uh, rehoned it way too big and you can see there's no wear ridge so they've been in and they rehoned it way too large and um, put standard size pistons back in without doing the clearance spec right and that is 100 percent the uh, root cause of the issue with the scattered or with the uh, shattered skirt if you have that much clearance your piston is going to rock in the bore and eventually this down here on the skirt is going to break up and go away and go through the motor so uh, I feel pretty good about this but I will have to get these uh, bored over I believe I have a pair of these half millimeter over pistons for it and I'm gonna specify uh, I suppose five to six thousandths clearance on this motor because it's a cast iron bore uh, but it's a liquid cooled um, you can uh, you can debate that amongst yourselves but I have some experience with these motors and setting up a skirt clearance and I can tell you that if you set up a TXL at uh, three thousandths or or three and a half thousandths you're probably gonna scuff a piston at some point um, so more like four and a half to six or five to six is a much safer target on one of these motors uh, I don't know about every other sled motor in the world I'd, I'm just strictly speaking about the TXL motors so there you go